On a continent of a billion people, 80% of the adult population in Africa do not have formal bank accounts. Sub-Saharan Africa is also regarded as one of the world's most promising markets for mobile telecoms. According to research by Musoni, a microfinance company based in Kenya, the number of mobile phone subscriptions in Sub-Saharan Africa has risen from 88.7 million in 2005 to 342.6 million in 2010. The number of the unbanked population coupled with the increase in mobile subscriptions presents an opportunity for mobile money. But it all starts with the mobile phone. And the fact that the mobile phone is this absolutely unique device. Now, we come from developing worlds and we've all seen what the mobile phone has done in places like Africa, India, China, some of the fastest growing markets in the world. We caught up with Stanley Munyayo from Musoni, a three-year-old microfinance company operating on a mobile money transfer platform. He shared the company's experience as a small microfinance player that exploited the opportunity that mobile money presented through its partnership with mobile giant Safaricom. We need to look at mobile money, particularly as financial institutions and MNOs, from a complementary point of view. Uh, we can never get into a competition space uh, as microfinance institutions with MNOs, but we can leverage on the achievements this far and be able to talk conclusively about financial inclusion for those who deserve uh, you know, financial services, particularly the, re the, the remote, uh, rural-based, and the financially excluded people. During the conference, a panel of industry experts shared their views on how to best utilize social media to create efficient and attractive mobile financial service offerings. In the last couple of years, we've seen social media starting to get involved in this. So uh, platforms like Facebook and Foursquare, uh, organizations like Apple uh, with its iPhone and uh, Nokia financial services, Google, and existing payment systems like PayPal and new ones like Ripple, uh, Faster Cash and Bitcoin, they're all combining to some degree uh, financial services, at least in pilot projects, into their uh, existing networks. Whether it's encouraging people to save money or even teaching about financial education. Why is this happening? It's something we're only just learning about now in the industry, but any marketing organization that's been marketing to consumers for years knows that you need to understand you know, needs, behavior, and attitude at a very specific level. It's been using behavioral science and psychology to understand how to sell to these people, to involve them, to interact with them to make them happy with the services being provided. This is true for fast-moving consumer goods and more recently social media. Doing proper market research, analyzing consumer behavior and preferences is of utmost importance when dealing with clientele. Maybe the reason that we, we tend to look at the things from the user first because uh, uh, me and a couple of my colleagues, uh, we have a history back in Nokia, so we were actually part of the team which was running Nokia's mobile financial services, so we were actually in the in the role of being the service provider in India. So I've, I've been on that side of the table, uh, being the one who's actually dealing with the technology providers, which now I am. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, in, in that context, we spend a tremendous amount of time and effort in actually understanding our customers, uh, the overall customer experience. And uh, we were kind of tracking and measuring that uh, almost on a monthly basis to understand which are actually the issues which are hindering the takeoff of our services, uh, why people are happy or not happy about our services over there. Good consumer etiquette could push the business to new frontiers. In financial services, we often get very focused on the product we're offering, but I think if you actually talk to customers and understand their needs, they're more thinking about crisis management or uh, saving up for large life events or managing volatile cash flows. They're thinking not in terms of products, but in terms of their own needs or their own behavior. Also, uh, apart from trying to look at that from a behavioral science or a consumer marketing perspective, you can also influence people's behavior. If you encourage people to save in a certain way, maybe they'll save more than if you just give them the option of doing it by themselves. We've seen various pilot projects with compulsory savings or little incentives which actually make people feel guilty about impulse spending. So I see that these approaches have some benefit in uh, making more successful financial services products and delivering to them to, them to the clients. Uh, how do you uh, take advantage of that? Well, I think that the interaction between social media and financial services is, is a really good example. Uh, see some of these platforms um, 
they're making it fun. You can play a game, and as you play the game, you learn more about how to manage your money. Or you might get points for the amount that you save or on regular loan repayments, and then you can achieve some status level, and you can show off to your friends, or even feel competitive about it. We're all motivated by different things. Some of us want to be connected to people, we want to be visible, or we want to win. So whatever it is, uh, a lot of these new applications coming through the social media networks are being used to interact with people in a much more fun, much more engaging way. Given Africa's population and the growing mobile presence on the continent, business opportunities in this space are abound for those willing to exploit them.